The Senate Committee on Labor heard public testimony from Amazon workers and others in support of a bill that aims to improve working conditions at Amazon warehouses. I was saying the raise, they want you to work in certain speed where certain people cannot work in that speed. Um, managers will come and harass you and tell you your rate is down. Um, they don't care if you're sick. They don't care if you're not feeling well. They just send you to a place called MCARE, which they don't do much for you. Um, the HR there don't do anything because they always say their hands are tight. I can always speak for myself. You know, I can always fight for myself. But majority of the workers there, uh, Latinas and Somalians, they really don't speak the language. Especially with my community, we don't have translators. As I was working there, I always told the managers, you guys don't pay me to translate. So if I give you an image of Amazon, that's the picture I will paint, is that you are constantly worried and you will not know when you will be fired. It's hard to know what the limits are set for you. Sometimes it's hard to know if you reach them or not. Sometimes you don't even know that you have a warning. The next day you come to work, your badge is not working. That means you've been fired. I am disheartened when I read about or talk to Amazon employees. They are not afforded the same protections or opportunities that I am. Amazon's policy of churn and burn treats people as, dispos <clears throat> excuse me, as disposable resources to be used, abused, and set aside. Senator Aaron Murphy is the Senate author of the bill that would establish worker safety requirements at warehouse distribution centers like Amazon. She joins me now in the studio. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. How did you become aware of the impact that Amazon's warehouse practices were having on their Minnesota employees? The workers uh, at Amazon have been lifting up their concerns for a number of years. So I recall back in 2017 or 2018, already in a meeting with people who work in that warehouse, talking about their concerns about their safety, about their ability to fulfill their requirements and earn a living to support their families. So this is not a new issue, but with a fair amount of work on their part, they are bringing now forward a solution that will help them accomplish what they want to do, which is to keep their jobs and to stay safe in their work. Warehouse type jobs are not known to be easy work, but what sets apart what's happening at Amazon from other similar warehouse type jobs? I think it is important to remember the moment of time that we're in. In this period of time post pandemic, Amazon in particular stands out for me as an organization, as a corporation uh, that delivered for Americans and Minnesotans in so many ways when we were separated from the lives in the ways that we acquired goods and services. Uh, they have built a model uh, that is exceptionally mechanized, that is exceptionally uh, organized, and workers are a part of that. But the mechanization, the automation, the productivity rules that Amazon has set are putting in conflict worker safety, worker health, and Amazon's goals to be productive and to deliver goods and services and earn a handsome profit. Is it fair to say that what Amazon is doing to manage their productivity is beyond the current laws on the books, that it's sort of cutting edge? So they're using quotas in particular um, and time in particular to judge their workers, but the workers don't necessarily know it. And those quotas and that time become a source of both keep going, keep going, keep going pressure on the workers and that sense that I could be fired if I'm not meeting this number, but I don't know what that number is. I think Amazon is choosing to put productivity at a very high order of priority, and they're doing it according to the workers, and their stories are profound, at the risk of worker safety. And we know over time that workers build workers build wealth, workers build value, and if we don't value the worker and their safety, we undermine the very good that is trying to be created in a corporate effort like Amazon's. According to some of the testifiers, and this goes to what you were saying, these workers are evaluated on quotas that they have no knowledge of, so they don't know whether they're even meeting it, which is creating a kind of vacuum where perhaps they're just trying to work as fast as possible all the time and just with uncertainty. What would your proposal do to change this? We would make those quotas visible. 
we would make the quotas visible to the employees and they would also see how others uh, similarly situated are performing underneath those quotas. We would also give the Department of, uh, it's the Department of Labor the ability um, with new tools to take a look at what's happening there and if necessary open up audits or investigations to make sure that we are meeting the worker safety needs that are important to us as a state. Uh in terms of worker safety, it is a big concern, and Amazon uh, nationally does have unusually high rates of injury. There was a recent CNBC article on that. The U.S. Department of Labor has issued citations against Amazon in other states. What would be different about how the state of Minnesota would address this? So I think it is important for the state of Minnesota to engage here. I think it's important to give uh, the Department of Labor new tools and OSHA new ability to take a look at this industry as it is building out a new version of the way goods and services are delivered. So I think, you know, I, I talked about this in the hearing. My dad built cars for a living. Uh, he used the GI Bill and went to school uh, and studied occupational health and safety because where he worked was unsafe for workers. And he made it part of his work both as an employee and as a part of the union to ensure worker safety. That's our job together. Uh, we shouldn't make a trade-off between worker safety and profits. And right now, I think the emphasis on profit in the corporation of Amazon is eclipsing the need for worker safety. So we need to engage there and make sure that we're balancing that so that the workers that are going to work there are safe and can do their jobs, earn a living, and support their families. Now, it seems also that another issue is one of communication some of these workers speak English as a second language or they have limited fluency in English. So what is the responsibility of a company? Let's say the company publishes what their quotas are so everyone is aware of the quota. How do, do they also have to ensure that the workers understand what those quotas are, that they understand the rules and the rights that they have as workers? You know, between an employer and an employee, there is always a power differential, always. Um, and if you want to keep your job, you have to understand the rules of the road, and yes, the employer has a responsibility there. When there is a language deficit, which you know we heard testifiers come to the table and talk about that, it can create an opportunity for an employer to, an exploit, to exploit a worker or a group of workers, and that's no good. That's no good for a company. I wouldn't want that if I were in charge of Amazon, but it's no good for the workers, and there was one testifier in particular who came and talked about how easily it is, how easy it is to instill fear in a group of workers if they don't understand the quotas and if they struggle with the language and they're worried at every turn that they could be fired if they're not meeting the obligations of work. That's, that's a situation ripe for exploitation and we shouldn't tolerate that. Well, and that brings up an interesting point also from the hearing because federal law requires breaks and it requires lunch breaks and all of that but these workers are so concerned about the quota that they're not aware of you know not knowing how well they're working that they're not taking those lunch breaks or those breaks that they maybe need so how does this legislation solve that does it make a manager say you have to take a break does it does it put the onus a little bit more on the company then the company should be assuring uh, that people are getting the work breaks that they need. Uh, as I listen to the workers talk about the place that they work, the plant that they work, uh, it is, it's big. Um, it takes a while to get from your workstation to the bathroom and back, and that's being timed. And if, it's, if, you, if you break the rule about time, then you're cited for that. So there's a physical problem uh, that is not being accounted for by the employer. I think over the course of the pandemic in particular, but this is, a, this is an old story of America. Uh, when you think about meat packers, when you think about nurses and working through the course of the pandemic, we hear story after story after story of workers feeling unsafe, um, of expectations for workers that put them in harm's way, whether they're worried about losing a limb, uh, hurting their back, um, or, you know, in some cases, when you listen to nurses, patients being harmed because they're not able to get the break that they need or they're in situations where they can't protect their health and safety, which can put patients at risk. So from my perspective, as a policymaker, it is important that we're paying very close attention to worker safety because it is a relationship to the well-being of Minnesotans. And then to call on employers or large corporations like Amazon to make sure that they're doing their part and in this case, 
this common sense measure makes sure that employees, the workers, have good information so they're able to stand up for themselves and to make sure that they're able to do their job, keep their job, and support their families. We want that. Senator Aaron Murphy, thank you so much. You're so welcome.